Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to another Layer by Layer. It's been a while, but we're finally back with a special project. Uh, in this tutorial, we're going to show you how to build this. This is a future wearable project. It's a unicorn horn printed in NinjaFlex. So we're going to stuff some NeoPixels inside there. It's got a chamfer thing, hole, and some tabs so we can sew it to any type of garment, maybe a hat, maybe a hoodie, or a headband. And we're also going to play around with dual extrusion. So this is actually dual extruded. And we'll take a look at how to build that. So let's get started. OK, so here we are in Maya. This is more of a visual video gaming big monster of a CAD software. You can do solid modeling, but we're going to be working with polygons in this tutorial because it's a lot easier to play with uh, nonlinear deformers so that we can make twists and flares and all sorts of stuff. So to start off, I'm going to make a, um, a cylinder. And what I'll do with the cylinder is um, I'll set it to the right uh, radius, so 15, and I'll add a height of uh, 145, which is the max uh, Y height on our printer. And then I'll add a lot of subdivisions, so 120 by 150 looks good. And I'll put uh, 10 for the cap. And then cool thing about this cylinder is you can add a round cap, so it makes a nice little rounded thing. Okay, and the next thing I'll do is make a duplicate of it. So now I have our two uh, cylinders, and that's what we want. Uh, the next thing I'll do is I'll add our first deformer. So I'll select both of these, and I will choose Create Deformer, Nonlinear, and then I'll choose a flare. And this is going to make our taper. So I'll open up the input, and I'll start with the end flare. So I'll put 0.2 for the, for the X and 0.2 for the Z. So that way it makes um, a little taper at the end. And then the next thing we'll do is we need to create a twist. So I'll select the two cylinders again. And I'll go to Create Deformer. And then I'll pick Nonlinear and then Twist. It'll apply a slight twist to it. So all we need to do is open up the input for Twist. And then I can start playing with the start and end angle. So for this, I'm going to type in uh, 540. We're actually going to put 0 for start and then uh, 1080 uh, for the end angle. And that's our twist. It's coming together really nice. Uh, <laughs> it's that easy right now. In order to make it dual extrusion, we need to do a couple Boolean operations so that we can subtract these two from each other. But for the first thing I want to do is work on sort of a, uh, an object that will cut out. So what we need to do is we need to cut out all this excess here so that it's a nice flat bottom so that we can print it with no supports. So to do that, I'll create another cylinder. And I'll change the radius to something big like 30. Well, we're going to move it, the cut so that it's right along where it needs to cut it. So somewhere around here. And then what I'll do is I need to calculate uh, the height of it with the round cap. It's, it, added, it, it added some extra stuff to it. So it's no longer 145. It's actually bigger. So what we can do is we can use a measure tool inside of Maya. So now you can see my distance is 148. So it's a little bit bigger than I need it to be. What we'll do is we'll bring uh, this guy. So we need to subtract. So we'll just move this up by 3. So now I'll bring up my hypershade. And now it should be exactly 145. OK, so now we have 145. We used our measure tools uh, to determine that because the, the rounded cap seemed to have added some extra stuff. So again, we made this thing here. And this is going to cut our, uh, our thing out. So I can even rename it bottom cut. So the next thing I'll do is I need to start creating um, the parts for uh, the bottom. So I'm going to create um, some sew tabs and uh, make it so that I can attach the horn to other things. So I need to create those separately. I'll actually hide this stuff here. So I'll put 15, height of 1, 120, 0 for the caps, positive 3.75. And then I'll use my first boolean here. So check this out. I'm going to come up here to mesh. Booleans, and hit Union, and that makes a, a combined uh, object. OK, next up I'm going to make the Sew Tab. So the Sew Tab is just going to be little squares with two, two holes in it so that you can um, thread a loop through it. So I'll make a simple box here, cube, polycube, and I'll start playing with it. OK, cool. So now we have our four tabs, and they're um, separate from each other. They are duplicates, and what we'll do now is merge or rather combine, union these so that it's all uh, manifold. So I'll just union these guys. So now we have our little base from which to, um, 
to merge to the to the two pieces, the two halves of the unicorn horn. And but the first thing I need to do is create uh, a hole here. So I'm going to create another cylinder. All right. So now we have ten. Duplicate or er, difference those two out. And now I have a hole. This needs to drop down so that it can uh, be aligned with the cutout. And now I have it exactly where we need it to be. So we'll do a duplicate of the set. And you see how they're two selected? Now we're just going to difference them out. So you can see I have that uh, cut out from each other. So now the next thing we need to do is do the same thing but for the other side. So, okay, so now we have the two things. Uh, the last thing we need to do is, is cut out that bottom uh, piece, flatten it out. So there's our bottom that we need, and I need two of them. So I'm going to duplicate that. There we go. And now I just need to subtract that from this, and then the other one from the other half. So here we go. We cut it out. Now we're going to do the next one. So cut that from this bottom. Hit difference. Wait a minute. <laughs> go grab a cup of coffee or a drink go pee or something. It's agonizing waiting because you never know if it's actually gonna work or not, because some most of the time <laughs> it doesn't. Okay, now we're back. Um, they're both chopped out and we now just need to get rid of the, uh, the history. So go here, delete history. So now that we have these two, um, what we need to do is we need to merge uh, one of the pieces with the bottom thing here, but only one of them, not both of them, because they need to be separate because we're gonna do a dual extrusion. If you're uh, not doing dual extrusion, you just want this one, then just merge everything and then you're gonna be good to go when you export. So um, so in order to do dual extrusion, your slicer has to support it. Um, most of the slicers out there will do it. Um, I'm using Simplify 3D, which has uh, some nifty features that'll make our uh, dual extrusion a little bit nicer. So what you start off is you hit import and you're gonna need to uh, export those two out separately and make sure that the origins are set in the center so that when you export them out, they retain the origin and they know where to snap. So here's what I'll do. I'll import them both. And you, most of the time when you export something out of a CAD software, it's never like the same, like the, the orientation isn't always the same. So like you can see here, the bottom is, is Y when the Y is supposed to be C. So all we gotta do is uh, select the two, uh, hit G, Command G for a group, and now I can uh, command them without having to do each one. They're now grouped, so I can uh, do negative 90 and then go to center and arrange, and it'll just center it out there for me. The next thing we need to do is set up our dual extrusion profile. So um, luckily inside of um, Simplify 3D, you have uh, the FlashForge Creator Pro is the printer we're gonna be using, and it comes with a profile for you. And one thing that I'll do in the addition is use the U shield. I'll put it on all extruders, and the U shield is a perimeter that goes around the whole object and it's catching all those uh, goopy ooziness so that when it prints, um, it sort of um, offsets it onto that perimeter. So it's basically a skirt that goes all the way up and is a perimeter, it's like a shield. So it's an ooze shield, hence the name. Um, so you can adjust some things. You can adjust the distance between uh, this from that. Obviously the more you adjust the difference, the more time it takes, but the less sort of goopiness you're gonna get. So that's one thing. You can also change the shape of it. I have it vertical right now, but they also have waterfall, which means it'll cascade with it, decide to morph with it. And you can also change the, the, uh, the sidewall angle, which I have not done yet. Um, one thing is you have to select the model. So at this point I have color one, I'll pick horn two, hit okay, hit okay. Double click on color two, hit select model, and then select uh, horn one, then hit okay. And um, that's pretty much it for the settings. Oh yeah, one thing, uh, I have 0% infill because I want to have a shell. It's already hollow, so it's gonna be like a shell in a shell, which is okay with me. Let's take a look at um, the tool path when you, ex not when you export, but when you slice it. So awesome thing about Simplify 3D, super fast slicing, it's already done. So let's take a look at it now. You can see when you, when you use, um, when you use uh, Active Tool Head, gives you a preview of the uh, the two extruders. So you can see one's green, is left, and right is, is blue. So it starts off by making the first layer like that. Nice nice hollowness. And then it starts creating uh, the the two the two swirliness. Uh, one thing you'll note is that take a look at the um, the way they're uh, cross-crossing each other. Like take a look at that point there. That is really good. That means that it's going to, uh, it has really good bonding to each other. And that's what you want. And one thing is you can adjust that um, by going over to addition, not additions, 
think it's under other. Yeah, see that horizontal size composition? That means it's, um, it's that new feature in Simplify 3 that lets you adjust tolerances. So if I don't have that, take a look what happens. If I don't have that, it actually creates a gap. There's a gap in between the two uh, swirly parts. So when I hit, um, when, I, when I slice it, you'll see the toolpath preview that it's got uh, a little gap in there. So take a look at that gap. That's a big gap, folks. And really, it's not supposed to have that gap at all. Um, you saw in the CAD that it's super nice. So you have to um, uh, be very cautious about that. Even though in the model there's no gaps, it still does that. So that's one thing. To, it might be Simplify 3D. Um, I have yet to try this in another app. But um, if you are using Simplify 3D and you get this gap, definitely check out the horizontal size composition and I put 0.5 there because that seems to be a good uh, number. If you put too much, like one millimeter, and then it gives you even a, a little rounding here that, hey, there's some overlap here. You sure you want to continue? Well, yeah, I don't want that gap. Anyway, um, if you add too much, like one millimeter instead of 1.5 millimeter or just 0.5 millimeter. Oh, look at that. I forgot to turn off the... Uh... So, okay, now it's, now it's off and you can see that they're now um, touching like the two halves are, are intersecting with each other. And that's what we want, not too much, not too little. What I was gonna say though, if you add too much, if you add a millimeter of, of offset compensation, it's gonna start extruding outwards and start making some nasty faces. So don't do that. Try, try to find a, a, a nice middle ground. Okay, well that's pretty much it. Um, we can export it now and print it out and see what it looks like. Um, I'm still working on fine tuning the settings. That's why we didn't go over them too much, but it is possible um, I had a little bit of an offset here, so you can see the Z got shifted over, so it's like, uh, or the Y got shifted over, a couple of, of gaps here and things. Um, it's just a breakdown, though, of the modeling process of how to put something like this together, um, using linear deformers and Boolean so that they're uh, manifold and cut from each other and using no infill and things like that. So if you guys have any ideas uh, on this project or any other projects, let me know. Ask your questions below in the comments, and be sure to like this video if you did indeed like it. And I'll do more if you guys like it. And thank you guys for watching. I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everybody.